Welcome to Butterflies of Wisdom, everyone. This interview is being recorded on a Saturday morning, and so you guys will probably hear this interview on Sunday because this interview is really special to me because this person said yes. I didn't think this person would say yes. This person is Amy Wicks. And how I met Amy Wicks is she's kind enough to be one of my teachers at the Academy of Art, and she's kind enough to nicely give me A's, big fat A's <laughs> in my classes. So in my class, I should say. So she really wanted to give you guys the perspective of being a journalist and um, looking at the Academy of Arts and what – so you guys get a sneak peek of what my program is like speaking to Amy Wicks. So I will let Miss Amy take it away. Well, uh, thank you so much for having me this morning. I really appreciate it. It's been um, such fun to have you in the class this quarter. Um, and you are definitely one of the, the best students, and you always bring an interesting perspective. So it's been a lot of fun to have you. And to, uh, this is actually my first time teaching this class. So um, it's been kind of a journey for all of us. <laughs> yes, it has. And I look at, you know, LinkedIn profile, and I noticed that you haven't been with the Academy Awards for that long. It's been right. four months or something. And right. so how did you swing that bill? What made you decide, okay, I want to be a journalist, yet teach journalism? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I've always, um, ever since I went to college and I was a journalism, I, I, that was the degree I was in, journalism. Um, and all of my teachers actually had real-world real experience, so they – were teaching and also on the side they were, you know, writing a column for the local newspaper or doing something like that. And I kind of thought in my head that that would be where I would end up, where I would be a journalist and I would also teach because I really like interacting with people and collaborating and um, kind of sharing ideas. So um, actually over the summer, I guess it was in spring, uh, I was somebody at the university reached out to me, um, had found me through uh, a friend of a friend and asked if I would be interested in teaching this class. Um, and I jumped at the chance because it's, it's just such fun. I love the idea that I'm, um, I'm working with new journalists, people that haven't really done this before. A lot of people are kind of a freshman in college uh, sort, sort of age. Yes. And then some people are a little older. And um, I like that I'm able to kind of bring my perspective and also hear theirs because I think they have a lot to bring and kind of, they're a different generation, and it's really fun to hear about, like, sort of what they're working on from blogs to social media, et cetera. Well, all at men my age, I'm <laughs> the oldest college student. I'm actually 30 years old with CP, the living a lot. And so I – the reason why – now, you guys know this. The reason why I am fully in um, into journalism is not because I don't – only love fashion. I am I an investigator at heart. If I don't know the answer, I'll Google it. I'll practically <laughs> Google it or ask the next person over. I mean, I love getting stories out of people. And I think when you become a journalist, that's the, um, that's the aspect. Yeah, I know. I think that... Um you know, it's interesting. It's been fun to sort of see the different paths people have taken. I think a lot of people came to the class thinking they were going to be maybe a fashion journalist, and now people are going and saying, you know, maybe I want to be an investigative journalist, or I want to be a columnist, or I want to be a feature writer, or there's just, like, different kinds of, of paths people are taking. And so I think that no matter what, you want to get the basics down. You want to know how to write a headline and a and a lead and structure a story and conduct a good interview and, get, and use quotes properly and that sort of thing. But um, but I think that the journey, um, well, the journey sort of never ends, you know. It starts in college and then 
um, like my career has kind of taken twists and turns along the way. And so, okay, I'm asking this question to you to be selfish. Let's just put it out there. Why <laughs> do you think more people with physical disabilities aren't journalists? Because this is really annoying. We're, um, we're talking about toothpick models, you know, that walk the runways of New York Fashion Week. And what you've told me behind the scenes is New York Fashion Week isn't glamorous enough. Um, so why do you think that people with disabilities aren't in journalism? I mean, I, I'm getting so much good feedback now that I'm in this program. They're like, yay, win. Yay, the diversity factor. And they're like, what is wrong with you people? Yeah, no, it's interesting. I think that, um, well, I think that journalism is an intimidating career path overall, you know? So I think that it's, especially now, I feel like people just don't really respect journalists <laughs> in the current yeah. political climate. Um, oh, people calling everything, yeah. yeah, everything is fake news, even if it's actually true oh, yeah. and all this stuff. Say that. <laughs> and so I, I think that, say that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a tough time to, it's always been a tough time to become a journalist because it is a very hard career and a lot of people want to do it. And it's, it's really, you can't be timid. You have to be a hard worker. You have to work harder than everybody else. And so I think no matter who you are, um, I think that's tough. You know, I think a lot of people um, don't want to put the hard work in. Um, and so, uh, I mean, you know, it's, it's a slog. And so I think, I think the average is most people who go to journalism school stay in the career for five years out of college and then they go and do something else because it doesn't pay well. Um, you work crazy hours. There's like tight deadlines. Um, you're dealing with like crazy editors sometimes. I mean, it can just be insane, you know, but on the flip side, it is, in my opinion, the most exciting career um, because it's, you get to meet new people every day and you get to step into people's lives and then step into somebody else. You know, you can kind of like learn about different careers and then move on to the next thing. It's never, ever boring. Um, so, you know, it's interesting. I don't know why more people with disabilities aren't journalists, but I think that um, if they're like, it, it, it is just a tough career overall. And I think most of my friends don't understand why I'm in it. <laughs> so, um, you know, no. I, I think, I think it's tough. People, people are looking at me like, yay, win, but at the same time, you're nuts. You're nuts. Right. And right. people yeah. think that I'm only going to work with cerebral palsy, and I'm like, nope, nope. I'm in it to work with the able bodied. I'm in it to work with all disabilities, able bodied yeah. too. And just to bring a different perspective to um, the fashion industry. And mm -hmm. people at the same time, as I said, people at the same time are like, yay, win, but at the same time, they're like, you're nuts. Why did you <laughs> go into this career? Why did you yeah. get to this program? And I'm like, because I love it and yeah. I love writing. I mean, and then I get help with my writing and what you saw were my baseline ideas, then I would send it off to someone who would make me sound pretty. So where <laughs> I use Siri to write my papers and do my homework and then I send it off to someone to make me sound pretty. But that's behind the scenes of why I got eight in this class. But because if you saw my writing without help, it would be a mess. It would literally be a mess. Silly and I don't get a lot. But that being said, um, what is the state most patient journalism project you have ever worked on? Because I know this, you did a stint with Conde Not Nash Traveler, which I love because I love to travel, as I said. In class, what is your favorite magazine? I'll, I'll go first, and I literally put it in the discussion board. You know, I think that um, the 
sort of thing I've done that I've loved the most that sort of impacted me the most was definitely I worked for Women's Wear Daily, which is a fashion trade publication. It was owned by Condé Nast, and recently it was um, sold to Penske Media. Um, but it was uh, one of the first jobs I had in New York City. I think I was around 26 years old. Um, and it was a great way to sort of learn the media business. I was covering um, magazines, newspapers, TV, uh online, et cetera, and meeting people and uh, writing different stories every day on tight deadlines, having to file a column five days a week, um, and trying to be competitive with the New York Times and the New York Post and everybody else who had a media column in New York at the time. So it was really thrilling and exciting and nerve-wracking, um, and I think I – my deadline, I think I was at work every night until like nine o'clock at night. Um, and then I would come back in the morning and do it all again. And I like didn't even care. And my work was my life and I was obsessed with it. Um, and I just loved it. So I think that that was something that really set the tone for my whole career. And, um, I was super thankful that Condé Nast and, um, that Women's Wear Daily gave me a, gave me a shot because before that I had just sort of written for local newspapers. Now, okay. So Conde Nast was your big time job now. Now what's this about you getting your pilot license? I uh, <laughs> read in the discussion board uh about you're really thankful for getting your pilot license. Is this a side project that you just um using to make the stress away from journalism? Or what is this baby? Yeah, you know, it's something that I've – it scares me a little bit, flying. And so whenever something scares me, I kind of want to attack it. Um, and I'm not saying that, um, like, I'm perfect at that, but it's just uh, – I've, I've been scared of flying since I was little. Um, and so I decided that I would just take it hat on and <laughs> take flying lessons. And so it's been uh, it's been so much fun and invigorating. And one of the reasons I did it is because I have a young daughter – She's 19 months old, and I want to set a good example for her to try things and to always take on things that even scare her. And so when yeah. she's a little older and we can have conversations right now, she's not really talking too much, but when we can talk um, and she gets older, I want her to see that her mom is taking on, like, crazy um, <laughs> crazy hobbies and uh, that that can be something we talk about so that she's inspired to also do the same if that's what she wants to do. Well, that's a great ex- that's a great example. Do something out of your comfort zone, and that's one of the reasons why I'm switching my career path. I've been stuck in the same career path since 2006, and I, and I actually don't have a associate degree, believe it or not. This will be my fashion journalism will be my associate degree. And I love the new career path. I love it. I love it. I love it. You guys probably think I'm nuts for working a part-time job and going back to school. Well, um, listen to Amy because she's not only teaching on her side, but now working as a full-time journalist. So I'm not that nuts. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely not. So... Where do you um, work now? So, you know, I recently moved. um, So I was living in San Francisco, and then I recently moved to Los Angeles for living in Santa Monica. Um, And I had been working for a fashion startup called Polyvore, um, and they were acquired by Yahoo uh, about a few years ago. Um, And then I moved here and kept working with them and then decided I kind of wanted to move in a different direction. Um, I'd been there for almost four years, and it felt like kind of a long time, so I was a senior editor for them, um, but then when I got down here, I found out about this really cool opportunity at another startup called Laurel and Wolf. Uh, it's an interior design startup, so it's actually not fashion, but it's still creative um, and still design, which is really cool. So I thought I would take a minute away from fashion and just kind of take this new role head on. It's heading up all the editorial and social um, for the company. And there was about 39 people at the company. It's super small. And it's been super fun. Uh, the company is only three years old. Uh, and I'm sort of learning as I go, but really, uh, 
helping to rebrand the company and do all of their copy and do all of their social and their blog and um, and everything else. So, and we're actually filming our first TV commercial, which I've never done before either. So, it's oh, just been really exciting. On that. Congratulations yeah, thank you. on that. Yeah, well, thank you. Big time too. And so, are you planning to stay with teaching? Now, you don't have to be nice to me about this one, ah. because I am a student in your classes. You don't have to be nice to one of your students. I just want to know, <laughs> in the way, are you planning to stay with the Academy of Arts? Because what I've learned from you, actually, if I don't mind, if you don't mind me saying this, I um, decided to do not quit my program because of the you. I'm I'm admitting that, honestly, I thought about it. I had a realization um, in my other class who, um, basically, my other class is a little bit tougher than yours. It's more of a studio class than okay. just a simple English class. And the teacher um, gave me a big stat F. And I'm mm. like, do I stay in this program? And I'm like, yes, because people want to see me do this. People want the diversity factor in journalism. And I'm like, yes, I'm going to stay in this program because why I'm getting a big set A in Amy's class. And if I need to take the studio class over again, I will. Yeah. That's cool. I think that's great. I mean, that's one of the things about school, right, is you're going to do really well in some classes, and some classes are going to be tough, and um, and that's life. I mean, you're going to get out and be writing stories, and some stories you're, your editor is going to say, oh, this is amazing, and some stories they're going to say, oh, this is, this is terrible. You're going to have to rewrite yeah. this. And that's just yeah. kind of like – it's like a microcosm of, of being a journalist. Yeah, being a journalist, no – um, a person asked me, they go, do you write stories and cement them? And then they get automatically published. And like, what, are you nuts? They don't get automatically published. You have to work with the editor on a tight deadline, and then mm-hmm. they may not even publish your story. That's true. That's true. I mean, it's That's really hard, true. especially as a freelancer, sure. because you you have to learn – um, the different things your different editors want, and not every editor is the same and wants the same thing, and so you have to kind of balance balance that, which is which can be tough. Which can be majorly tough. And so, I am I enjoy your classes. The fact that that you entertain us all the time with um, bananas, journalism. Stories. And the fact is, mm-hmm. as you said on this podcast, fake news, I'm like, I know I'm enjoying it on the fake <laughs> news grill, which I, yeah. I will never, ever, 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 ever do you guys. Never, ever. Because that's not in my Moses Off of Monday, nor is it in any Moses Off of Monday. So, looking in, looking in, Interior design is completely different than fashion. I didn't even realize interior designers needed um, freelance writers for blogs, I guess they do. But so what would be the best tip for the journalist starting out at any school, not just the Academy of Arts? Let's mm-hmm. just generalize it, not to take it out of my program. What would be the best tip for any new journalist who wants to go back to school? Yeah, I think that definitely you want to um, you want to write and read as much as possible. So on the side, have your own personal blog, and it doesn't have to be about fashion. It can be about art or sports or whatever it is that you like to write about. Um, and I think that you should really maintain kind of like a uh, and a good social media presence, um, you know, on Twitter and on Instagram or wherever you like to be. Um, I think it's also important to um, to, to intern if you can. Uh, I did. A, I think I did like eight internships in college, um, and I just tried a bunch of different things to see what I liked, and I learned 
uh, through that, for example, I thought I wanted to be a broadcast journalist, and then I interned at NBC, um, and I realized I did not want to be a broadcast journalist, and that's what led me to print. Um, and I think that and you just want to, like, meet and talk to as many people as possible, um, write as often as possible, and read the work of writers that you admire. Um, and, I mean, don't, don't, don't be afraid to reach out to those writers and tell them sometimes, like, hey, I love this story. Um, do, would you ever have time for coffee? It's like, I mean, you would be surprised. I mean, so many people would say yes. Um, and you yeah. can pick up some great tips from people. So I would say never be afraid to reach out to writers you love follow everything they do, read all the good stuff, and write as often as possible. And can I add in one more tip that you mm-hmm. said in the last module? Now, Glennon, we have a week to do these modules for you guys, and Amy doesn't build the modules the IT people at the Academy of Work do. And so I don't know whether it was you or them, but they put – in the last module, enjoy what you read in, enjoy social media, just enjoy journalism in general. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, and I know, thought that was the coolest thing on the planet. <laughs> well, that's good. No, I'm glad. If you don't enjoy your career, there's no turning back. That's true. If you enjoy it, it doesn't actually feel like work. It just feels like you're having fun. I mean, you know, there are days where, yes, it does. I mean, you're on a deadline and you have writer's block or something and it feels like work. But overall, you know, if you can come home from work and maybe you feel exhausted, but you also feel exhilarated. I mean, that's the best feeling in the world, in my opinion. Yeah, that's the best feeling in the world. And my last and final question for you, and then I'm going to ask, you will can people find you and then I'm going to answer your all questions. How do you get over writer's block? How do I get over writer's block? It's tough. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I often, uh, I have so many different things that I do. Sometimes I'll just close my laptop and go for a walk um, and listen to some music. And when I'm kind of drifting away, listening to a song, all of a sudden I'll come to something I'll stop everything I'm doing, and then I'll just write it down on my phone. Um, Sometimes I'll uh, just kind of – I'll cook something. I just – the key is that I'm just doing something else. If I'm just staring at the computer, um, it's nothing to happen. Yeah, but I really need to kind of change – like a change of scenery. Um, And then just maybe talking to a friend or or maybe I'll call my dad. I just have to do something that – takes me away from it and then oftentimes that moment when I'm totally away from it like I come up with the greatest idea and then I go right back (laughs) so you just have to have your laptop ready all the time but it's just yeah it's good to take but at the same time you need a brain break at the same time that you're sitting in front of your laptop you need to get away yeah that's true especially when you're on deadlines she's um yeah you need to get away. And um, now with these phones, you can actually do homework using Siri on your cell phone or write a note to yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's really helpful. So, yes, technology is really helpful now. Um, so where can people find you and where can people contact you? And then I'll also put where they can contact the Academy of Arts as well as they're interested in my program and they're interested in having you teach them. How lucky am I? Yeah. I get Amy to teach me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can definitely uh, I teach Foundations of Fashion Journalism at the Academy of Art University, and I will be teaching it again next quarter. Um, you can find me on Twitter um, at amywick one and then I'm on Instagram at ARWick7. Yeah. So follow Amy, and if you're interested in applying for the Academy of Arts, trust me, this is my program. It will be my program hopefully until 2019. Supposedly I'm supposed to uh, graduate with my journalism degree in 
2019. That's a little yeah. bit scary. One more year to go. And yeah. that's a little bit scary, and I'll call myself a full-fledged journalist. So now that we've got um, the where can people find you questions, questions over, I want you to ask me the questions that you want to ask me that should be for a good ball. Trust me. They did not for a good ball. Yeah, so I had a few questions for you. One of them um, is kind of um, plays on our class, and so I was curious, what is your ultimate career goal once you get and graduate from college? My ultimate career goal, and you know the things I mentioned and so many times, and it's a problem to know which you know this from um, reading my discussion board. Um, my ultimate for the real goal is to make one of my books on the New York Times bestseller list and get the New York Times bestseller list, which is a hard um, job to get, and it's hard to get on the New York Times bestseller list, but I might as try. And what I'm noticing now is since continuing this podcast and going back to journalism, is that people are giving me more credit because I'm becoming a journalist than they ever gave it me before. Mhm. And uh, and also uh, my second question for you was who are you most influenced by um, right now in becoming uh, a journalist and, and why are you influenced by them? Can I be selfish and say you because oh. I love. How you, can I be selfish and say you, I thought about this. I thought, should I go with Heidi Klum or put it one way? And I'm, I just said, no, I'm just going to be selfish and say you. Because I love the way you bring your little experience to the classroom, which most professors, and now I don't know about a strictly journalism program, but most professors do not. They somehow forget the real world experience, and um, I read one of your articles on British Vogue. Well, you posted that, and you said share the links of what you're working on. So we all did that. I shared my podcast, but I um, read your work, and it's beautifully written. And so I don't know how you swung that one, but looking with dog freelancing for them. But I love the way you interact with students. And sorry if I sound sound girlish here, but that's that's the truth. That's the truth. I mean, you're the one that's making me stay in this program. Oh, well, that's that's really great to hear. I appreciate that, and I'm glad that you're sticking with it. Well, yeah. And I hope that you will... um, I hope to meet you in person, and I hope to meet your child in person, oh. too. Jeez. You, um, you said, she said to me in a, she said in a, another interview that she gave, she goes, I get up at 6 a.m. It's not by my, my choice. It's by my daughter's <laughs> choice. I'm like, more power to you, baby. More power to you. I'm like, what do I mean stuff on Sunday night late, and no one why you're chipping in those discussion boards late, and God, and no one why you're posting stuff on odd hours in those discussion boards, <laughs> because you need to work around your mommy duties. Yeah, that's true, it's true, it's it's a different, oh, yeah. it's a different thing when you have a kid, yeah. Yes, it's a different thing when you also teach kids, Wait, jeez. <laughs> and um, so that's why I'm getting my journalism degree because I'm kind of tired of teaching kids. But um, at the same time, this career will not be born, you guys. I will not get born by this career. Jeez. Deadlines. Deadlines and me are not friends right now, but we will be friends because I won't get bored by the square, and trust me, I will keep my toe in the education 
don't, but I do consider myself a full-time writer. And I definitely, definitely, definitely appreciate you taking the time out on a beautiful Saturday morning to come and spend an hour with me, Amy. I know you have better stuff to do now that the semester's over, like writing and hanging out with your child. And Aww. but you decided to do this. No, I'm, it was a pleasure to to be a part of it, and thank you so much for the invitation. I really appreciate it. Well, you're welcome. You're welcome, and I definitely hope you guys enjoyed this other side of my life that you guys have been hanging on with me God knows for how long now since September and um, this is going to be another wild journey for one more year you guys and then we get fashion journalism on their belt but I definitely appreciate Amy's time and I hope you guys enjoy another fabulous interview and Amy knows the girl to share this out when I hand the link which I'll hand the link on today actually and it won't come out until tomorrow and we'll see what happens but I appreciate to learn the insights of a, of a freelance journalist so thank you Amy and I hope to work with you again in class. Thank you I so much. To work with you again. Thank you. Bye, you guys. All right. Bye.